morning everyone and welcome to our service this morning on behalf of St Mary's Church in Woburn. We hope you are keeping well and as safe as you possibly can and also enjoying the blue sky this weekend and the sunshine. It really does feel like spring is on its way and that's inspiring and hopeful isn't it? So the vision of St Mary's Church is to know the Lord in and through worship and the scriptures. It's to grow as his disciples and it's to go and make him known in our communities. So we really hope this morning that you feel a true presence of God in your life as you join us in worship now. So let's just quieten our hearts for a moment. Let's lay aside the chaos of the morning and just be still and know that God is God. And let's get ready just to soak in his presence, to hear his word and to pray to him, to worship him. Let's just take a moment now. So let's pray together. Let us trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. Let us acknowledge him in all our ways and he will make our path straight. Thank you, Lord, that you always have something for us, a key for every problem, a light for every shadow, a relief for every sorrow and a plan for all our tomorrows. Thank you, Father, that in these uncertain times, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. So we stand on you, our rock, right now this morning. Please open our hearts and our minds to hear your word and to hear how you want to speak to us today and help us to use all that we learn, all that we hear, all that we already know to bless others in the way that you bless us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. assurance Jesus is mine oh what a full taste of glory divine power of salvation purchase of God born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song Praising my Saviour all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Saviour all the day long Perfect communion, perfect delight Visions of on my sight angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song praising my Saviour all the day long this is my story is my song praising my Saviour all the day long perfect submission all is at rest I in my Saviour am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above with his goodness lost in his love this is my story this is my song pray 
praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. A reading from Psalm 22, verses 23 to 31. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honour him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfil my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live for ever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship, All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 8 verses 31 to 38. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello everyone. We come to the second Sunday in Lent. Lent is the season where we traditionally reflect, take stock of our lives, uh, a measured thought about where we are in our walk with God. It's the season where Jesus was tempted and tested in the wilderness. And of course, it leads up to the celebration uh, of Easter, the cross and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. So this week, our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 8. And verse 31 says this, and these are words of Jesus. The Son of Man, Jesus often refers to himself using that title, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected and killed and raised on the third day. Now, one of the things we consider in Lent is something we don't often think about. It's the call that we actually are called to suffer with Jesus, with Christ, as part of being a disciple. Romans 8 chapter 8 verse 17 says this, Now if we are children, 
then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may share also in his glory. We're called to suffer with Christ in some way and on occasions. Suffering is a big mystery, the suffering of this world, and out of this mystery of suffering often springs the question, why? Suffering is the big arguments that atheists will often deploy to present their view that there can be no God. Yet despite this, the fact is, amongst those who in the atheist scheme of things would have the most reason, because of their suffering, to give up on belief in Jesus Christ and in God, you find the greatest faith quite often in that very, amongst those very people. I often think of Gordon Wilson. Uh, his daughter, he died some years ago, but his daughter was blown up in the inner skilling bombings. A lovely woman blown up for, in, a, in an awful way and their loss was heartrending. And yet he was a man of great faith and of course became one of the key uh, peace campaigners that led to the process that brought about the Good Friday Agreement and the end of the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Amongst those who've suffered most, sometimes you find the deepest and most fruitful faith. Suffering just is part of this world, and I, for one, don't know why. The why question is with me as any, much as anybody else. But I do know that God in Jesus suffered with us and the result of his suffering, Jesus' suffering, was world changing. When we suffer now as his children, we do it not alone, but with him. He has promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And he makes good on that promise. It's a phrase that's helped me over the years. This is it. What I do know helps me live with what I don't know. The first time I heard that phrase, it was uh, years and years ago, as a story was being told of a Christian man who had lost his wife and daughter in a road traffic accident. And speaking afterwards, he had said he didn't understand why this could happen, why his wife and daughter had died. But he also spoke, because he was a Christian, of the love of Jesus and the grace of God and that somehow God was there in it all and he summed up his experience with these words what I do know helps me to live with what I don't know I found that true in my life one of the ways that all of us perhaps are likely to taste something of the suffering of Jesus in our context is in rejection. We can fear rejection, yet if we publicly own uh, our faith in Jesus Christ, rejection by some people is almost inevitable and rejection is never pleasant. Those holding orthodox Christian views are starting by to be described by some in our society as extremists, fundamentalists, bigots or phobic in some way. It can be really uncomfortable to be a follower of Jesus and someone who holds up his ways and his word. But Jesus is wonderfully patient with us when we fall short, which we all can. But you know, but for every Christian, sooner or later, we need to nail our colours to the proverbial mast, remembering that for Jesus, that meant being nailed to a cross. There is excitement and there's wonder and satisfaction, fulfilment in following Jesus Christ. Gosh, I wouldn't live life any other way. But there is also a cost. Much of the church is rediscovering how to celebrate and rejoice our God. You know, Jesus, after all, said, promised us life and life in abundance, all its fullness. There is so much to celebrate as we follow Jesus and all that he has done for us uh, on the cross and through his resurrection and the promise of his spirit, the Holy Spirit with us now. I can't wait 
to be back in church sometime very soon after the 21st of June, celebrating God, his goodness with all of you in person, just as we long to. And that thank God we've got a target date to work towards to do that. But there is a danger, of course, in discipleship and in worship. Uh, the danger for every Christian, you and me, is that we become blessing chasers, you know, a bit like the storm chasers that go around wanting to always be in the greatest storm. Blessing chasers. And if we become like that, we forget that there is sacrifice. Because without sacrifice, our faith will become somewhat unreal, very shallow, and just a feel-good copy of the real thing. Sometimes we are called to suffer with Christ and stand up for him. You know, and I thank God for the sacrificial service of many in our benefits of four churches and the offerings, you know, the sacrificial offerings of resource and finance as well of our congregations. Thank you and praise the Lord. There is a cost to following Jesus. There is. Verse 34 of our reading, then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, if any would anyone would come after me, they must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Giving up things for Lent is in part about being master of our appetites and desires. But it's also about offering ourselves afresh to God. Verse 35 of our reading. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. So what does taking up our cross, denying ourselves, and following Jesus mean? Well, it means giving ourselves, investing, in other words, our life. That includes time and resources in him so easy to become immersed in our culture rather than immersed in our god it involves being known as his and serving others in his name it involves standing up for him and his ways and his word discipleship has blessings but it also has sacrifices we chase all sorts of things with our time and energy and resource uh, but we're called to invest in that which is eternal as well, that will bear fruit in us and fruit through us for others. What, is it, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can someone give in exchange for their soul? Verses 36 and 37. So ask the question this Lent. What message does my life, my priorities, as well as my words, send? Well, for a start, to those closest to me, friends and family. Not to get on some sort of guilt trip, but just to take stock that we might come closer to the Lord who loves us, died, died for us and rose again for you and me. We're sometimes called to be prepared to suffer for our faith in Christ as well as to celebrate it. When we, faced, when we face some cost for being a disciple of Jesus and standing for him and his word, in those situations, we actually encounter him in a unique way. The potential fruit from those encounters is maturity of faith. Let us pray. Father, enable us to be people who are ready to take up our cross and follow you ready to stand for you, ready to serve and love for you, others, and ready to be people in every way of your word. So, Father, we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our God, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. We bow before you and worship you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We pray 
for the power of your spirit to be on each one of us, that we may be witnesses to you in this world. We pray for the need project that is supported by St Mary's. Father, encourage every helper and strengthen them for the work involved. We pray for every individual or family who receives provision from this organisation, that it will bless and sustain them physically and that it will release your love into their lives like a mighty river. Lord, supernaturally invade their lives and homes with your love that their situations may be transformed and filled with hope and joy. We bring before you Boris Johnson and his closest advisers. Father, give them the best advice and wisdom as to how to manage this pandemic. Give them your courage to do what is best for this country, even if it is not popular. We pray you will sustain and strengthen them in every way so that they can lead this country into a safe and blessed future. We pray for ourselves as we cope with the effects of COVID. We remind ourselves of your wonderful promise, all things work together for the good of those who love him. Lord, you did not say some things, but you said all things, and this includes COVID. We thank you for that wonderful promise. We pray for Steve at this time as he leads the benefice through this period of lockdown. Give him physical, emotional and spiritual strength for this time. Give him your wisdom and insight and a shepherd's heart so that in the power of your spirit he would lead us in green pastures and beside still waters. And in a moment of silence we lay before you friends, relatives, family who we want to lift up before you, who have a need and we want you to touch them. So let us just be quiet and bring these people before the Lord. Thank you, Father, that we have been able to lay our praise and needs before you. Hear all our requests and all our praise. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Prayer to close with. A prayer by George Appleton. Holy Spirit, whose presence is liberty, grant me that freedom of the Spirit, which will not fear to tread in unknown ways, nor be held back by fear of others, or misgivings of ourselves. Ever beckon us forward to the place of thy will, which is also the place of thy power, O ever-leading, ever-loving Lord. Amen. And now the blessing. The blessing of God our Father, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, and those we love, for evermore. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a good week. Take care. God bless. Goodbye.